Okay, guys, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly dungeon master this evening. Uh, tonight, actually I won't be, I'll be your friendly role master this evening, because tonight we are carrying on with our October campaign playing Iron Crown Enterprise's classic fantasy role-playing game, Role Master. And the version of Role Master that we are playing is Role Master 2nd Edition, also known as Role Master Classic. There are a couple of differences between 2nd and Classic, but they are about 98% uh, completely uh, the same. Uh, and with me tonight are the stars of our campaign, of our Heirs of Sea and Sorrow campaign. I'll go with the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are, who you're playing, and uh, well, I guess not, we don't know what level you are. Whether you're conscious or <laughs> injured or not. <laughs> uh, first up, we have Jeffrey. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Jawar. Um, he is a level five warrior monk, and I don't know if I'm injured or anything. Not. You are t <laughs> taking down um, Soralan mercenaries left and right <laughs> last session. Watching uh, Sir Kira's back. And next up is D our resident armor smith, Dave. Hey, everybody. I'm Dave. I am playing Sir Kira Vinci. She's a level five warrior fighter um, in the, a knightly fashion. And uh, she is slightly wounded, but otherwise in good health. Nice. Um, next up is Will. Hi, I'm Will. I am playing Nimrice. Um, he is a fifth level animist half elf, and I am currently unconscious. <laughs> yes. And last but certainly not least uh, is Andrew. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew. I'm playing Kaya, a level five rogue uh, of the Harazi race. Um, and I'm, I'm all right. You know, it's not too bad there. It's mm -hmm. been better, but. We're all right. <laughs> nice. So let's shift over to the scene of our last session. And then uh, what? Uh, why don't we bring uh, Jeffrey up to speed for what happened the last time? Where are we going here? I'm going to this one down here. Hold on. There we go. All right, guys. So what happened last time? At the time of recording, for those listening uh, at, who may be joining us later as well, too, we're just back from a, a two-week break. Uh, I was on vacation last week, so it has been two weeks since we played. So we're all shaking off uh, the, my uh, vacation lethargy and uh, everyone else's uh, other otherwise active lives. <laughs> what happened two weeks ago, guys? Well, we left off when when jeff was last here um we had been confronted by uh elden trove and his sister uh their giant the oakford giant and uh their wizard plus four of these sir Allen mercenaries that were behind us mm -hmm. um and just as the session ended um we were gonna roll initiative or whatever and then when the session started, <laughs> stroke of luck, we had friends that had circled back or turned what turned back and come looking for us. So uh, Kaya, Nemrice, and George's character, the Zarda Crick, yeah, um, had all shown up, and um, they made quick work of the mercenary mage. He was the first to fall. I believe uh, Nemrice had taken him down. Yeah, Nemrice took him out in one hit. Yeah, one one bite, and that's all it took. Uh, hit him in his ribs, and his inside shook. And um, <clears throat> sorry, bad rap lyrics from the '80s. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, unfortunately, though, to f we're following that up, the Oakford Giant. Um, did a number on our poor friend Emrice, who's laying there bleeding now. But in retaliation to that, um, Kaya flew past and then around and took a pot shot at the Oakford Giant. No, 
Was it the Oak for Giant first or the second? Uh, so the first, uh, Kaya can... made uh, very made effective in... use of Astonishing <laughs> Fortune, uh, avoiding a crippling shot from yeah. one of the Sorowan mercenaries crossbows that would yep. have taken uh, <laughs> taken Kaya out of the fight altogether. But yep. then did a couple of crippling shots of her own. Yep. First on uh, Lady Utis. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, taken her out, and while she was laying there bleeding, the Oakford Giant went to help her, and um, Kaya put was a like, shot nope. through his side. <laughs> yep. For his troubles, um, he got a uh, an arrow in the forearm, so he could not uh, wield his uh, two-handed sword any longer. And then a second shot through his ribs or something? Uh, no, the, it, uh, I don't think he suffered any... No, that was it. He's, yeah, he's that was been it for disarmed. him. She oh, got an arrow him. through the throat. Oh yeah, that was yeah. A, the the first crippling shot was uh, the, the another night. Oh, her no, through the ribs as well, right? And there she was two was shots dying. on her. Yeah, because she There's got two shots on her, one of the, one to the throat, and like went from like you can see her health meter is still there. Yeah. Uh, uh, in a, I was shocked and remain shocked at how at sweet at how this game can work. Uh, that like okay, sure, I'm gonna take her out with one two shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> uh, and, and then, then, and then Sir Kira had a bit of a problem with uh, with fighting Elden Trove. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, I dropped her weapon, right? Dropped her weapon, or fumbling, fumbling with her weapon, and was stunned. And uh, Jawar was behind her, taking out a Sol Solaran mercenary, but every other round. <laughs> And then something happened to Elden Trove. What happened there? Was it another shot from Kaya? I think it might have been. Or was it the or was it the magic from George? Uh, that's right. Yeah, it was, it was magic. Yeah, it was the it was the magic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like a burst of lightning or something. Well, I see he rolled yep. a ninety-seven, uh, and then got a fifty-six plus his seventy-five from his lightning bolt, uh, and then rolled a ninety-nine on one of the three crits he was rolling for that. So Elden Trove was killed almost instantly and Lady Eustace will bleed out uh, six or 10 seconds after the Oakford Giant recovers from his stun. Uh, and if the closing thought that Kaya had was that the two that were downed, the two um, uh, noble children, uh, Sir Elden and Lady Eustace, uh, or Eustace. I think I'm just going to change her name to Eustace because I think we've all been calling her that, <laughs> myself included. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to learn when you know an edit is uh, is uh, appropriate. Not every uh, first yes. draft yeah. survives contact with the game. So, Lady Eustace. I don't know why I'm changing to the now deceased. <laughs> you might be OCD if. Yeah. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Seriously. I'm going to change the name of a dead NPC. <laughs> uh, there may be a consequence uh, from her death. Uh, <laughs> so, ah, well, there you go. Dude. Yeah. So then, um, what we have is the t two of the surround mercenaries ran off. Uh, the two who had crossbows uh, ran off before. Now, I guess in, th in theory, Jawar is more than fast enough to be able to catch them. So if you, have inten if you intend to catch them and take them hostage, you certainly could do that or try at least. Um, mm. Let him run. I mean, I don't see Jawar leaving uh, Sir Kira. So unless she's chasing after them, then he sure. should stay here. So. So both the Mercenary Mage and Nimrice are unconscious uh, right now. And it will be, I believe, uh, what is it here? Healing, I think it's it's only like 10 minutes until you uh, get a chance to, to wake up, I think. Let me see here, unconscious. Unusual sight, that is not what I'm looking for, index. Hey, speaking of indexes, uh, so the Traveler, this is a non sequitur, but Traveler from uh, second edition from Mongoose. Jeff, remember how, how much I bitched about the uh, lack of an index in it? Yeah, yeah. So, and this is certainly I'm not uh, claiming uh, that I, I, I know this is a common complaint, but uh, they just released their 2022 version of the uh, like an updated version of the core rulebook. Guess what's yeah. in the back now? I'm guessing it's an index. It's an index. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in addition to a bunch of other stuff. Um, but 
Okay, so then, recovering, let's see here. Let's see here. All right. Oh, here we go. I just found it. Not death, not death. Recovery from wounds. Here we go. It says... Um... <laughs> Okay, so you're absolutely not going to die from the concussion hits here. Uh, does anyone else have any herbs or um, any uh, healing spells they can use on uh, oh, Nimrice? Herbs, but I'm unconscious, I think. I think everybody's got at least some herbs on their yeah, uh, person. Yeah, let me read what they were. I have three oh, I doses of Kusumar petals. Mm, okay. I think that's what I've got. Uh... I think Let some of them, yes, some point. of you guys have more potent herbs than the others, because some of you guys have a lot more uh, concussion hits than the others have. Yeah, yeah I've I got have... three doses of the Kusumar petals as well. Yeah, okay. that's what I have. Well, I'll use one of the do my doses of Kusumar petals on Nemrise if, if needed. Sure. Let's see here. Concussion hits heal at a rate of one per hour. So you'll be unconscious for an hour, and then you would regain conscious. So if, if you want to have Nimrice up and, and alert right away, uh, that would be the way to uh, to do that, is to just crush some of the petals and, and kind of, um, you know, place them in his, uh, in his mouth. Okay, well, How maybe much it'll do... We'll, add, we'll mix, mix, mix them with some water and make, like, a cold tea or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. And if, to be clear, the, the Oakford Giant's not dead, right? He is not, no, but his arm is completely fucked. So, oh, actually, yeah, it is. Uh, so you gain 22 point. concussion hits back, uh, Nimrice. Yeah. There's like a bitter, sweet, almost like, um, uh, like almost a, um, I'm trying to think what the equivalent would be, uh, like a sharp ginger uh, kind of uh, flavor to the to the water being poured in your mouth, and it just you kind of you know you um, can feel your heart kind of beating a bit and uh, a bit faster. And you're restored to consciousness, and you have a chance to look around. And I suppose the first thing you see uh, looks like Jawar is taking uh, the Oakford Giant into custody. And uh, there's the body of Lady Eusis uh, on the ground, blood kind of out of her mouth. Mm. What so, a waste. <laughs> oh, and I guess uh, Sir Kira, I'll move you over next to Nim Rice. What do you guys wish to do now? You're still only um, a little more than, you know, an hour and a half uh, into, oh no, you're very, you're actually almost halfway there because you're, you're nearing that, um, uh, that uh, cabin, that uh, cabin that people use to wait out the weather on the way to right. um, Myrna Doom. Yeah, we were on our way there and turned back. Mm-hmm. So, so Kira, what do you what's going through your mind right now? Knowing now sort of what, what's happened. Uh we just killed the bastard daughter and the eldest son. Um it is uh, uh, no, the uh, second son. Second son of uh of a rival king. Yeah. Um uh, not not great for uh politics for my father or hey, guess what? If uh that's the if I'm the one who's now heir to the land, shit. Uh, what are we going to do with these? Well, we can't just leave them out on the road. My horse is up ahead. Well, probably in Myrna Dune already. Uh, uh, they can tell you that it's actually t uh, tied up with um, uh, Captain... Uh, Zedek at the uh, at the halfway point. Okay. They turn back uh, when they sort of talked it over. They sort of have like a moment of like, all right, we can't just let her, you know, come here on her own. I could well, like, I'm, I could fly, I could fly for quite a while. So I could maybe, maybe scout around and see if there's a place where we could hide these bodies. And in a way that we'd be reasonably sure they wouldn't be found for a while. 
Um, the mercenary mage isn't dead, right? It is unconscious. Uh, the mercenary mage is not dead, and uh, the Oakford giant is not dead. Hmm. So let's bind, bind and gag that mage so he can't cast any spells. Okay. And uh, we'll bind the wound of the Oakford giant, take his weapons away. Okay. I don't recall him having any bleeding injuries, so I think okay. it's just it's just that his arm is, is fucked right now. It, it's shattered. Trouble. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. That's fine. Um, we'll have to carry the bodies. They terrible p people, but still their rank and position in society, we can't just leave them on the side of the road. So, uh, Kai, if you can go and get patches, that'll make it easier for us to carry the bodies to Myrna Dune. Uh, patches is horse. Okay. Or her horse, sorry. I, uh, yeah. I can, I can, uh, I can do that. Yeah. So we'll, he will make preparations. Kaya can easily just takes off black wings beating and, and uh, it, it will be a matter of uh, minutes uh, before you, uh, if that, before you reach the uh, uh, cabin, because it's really not that far away. Uh, you're t t who has uh, rope use? Mm. Does anybody have rope use? I don't remember. Trickster uh, goes to Jawar. No, well, it, it, I have rope mastery listed under secondary skills, but there's no proficiency. It's just a regular base score, so I assume that's a no. Uh, that means you're <laughs> trained in it. Then, if you've got any of your uh, skills that are listed uh, there with any numbers, uh, those okay. are things you've actually got ranks in. So you're actually trained. Okay, okay. I'm as well then. Yeah. So 62 for Kaya and Jawar, how 55. are you? 55. 55. So what you could do is you could help. Uh, sure. Right, so then. Well, Kaya's not here, so. Oh yeah, Kaya took off, right, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. Jawar, why don't you give us a rope mastery check, please? All right, first roll back. Come on, <laughs> big goes. money. 88. Oh, yeah. So it's not That's a full, uh, it, it's tied. Uh, You've seen what the result is, and you guys have four points of Astonishing Fortune. Yeah. you want to re-roll that, or you want to sit with that? Hmm. This is to have the mage tied up so that he can't cast spells? I'm more... Well, yeah, I guess it's... it's this would be the, t the ropes on both... Uh, oh, on both the, of them. Okay. The Mercury Mage and the Oakford Giant. Yeah, yeah let's re-roll it. Okay, we don't want to... This could avoid an entire combat, so as well. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. There you, go. there you go. So yeah, you you tie something together, and then it, I think maybe just because he's on the ground, it's not quite as you sort of let it go, and you're like, oh, shit, hold on. Yeah, and you tie it up, and you've got solid and tight knots that will be very difficult to escape. <laughs> do they have their legs? Oh, bless you. Uh, do they have their legs free? And it's just your hands that you've bound, and then you've gagged the mage. Yeah. Okay. Is the Oakford giant gagged? We might talk to him first. Okay. So if you take his, his helmet off, and I'm not sure you've ever seen him without his helmet before. Um, he has <sighs> a, you know, his hair is completely like, not shaved bald, but like it's kept to that sort of like very, very close cropped uh, thing. Um, you would take like, you know, uh, if you took uh, like sheep shears to it and then sort of, you know, cut things down. Clean shaven as well too, but there's some, uh, you know, five o'clock shadow that has grown in. Dark, uh, his hair, if it grew out, would be uh, dark and his uh, uh, beard is beginning to, to darken. So it gives a bit of a um, roguish look to him. He's just a solid, you know, block of a man too. Big, thick neck. Uh, he stands, uh, well, with the, the elves would be able to reach him easily if, uh, Sir Kira, you were the one who wanted to take the hat, the helmet off, he'd have to kneel down for you to comfortably get a, you know, get the helmet off. Okay. He does so, though. He is, in spite of the fearsome size of him, he is compliant. Since he's surrendered, he has uh, complied with everything you've said. 
Barrett. So with it off, he looks down at you and you realize you've never seen his eyes before. In all the, the times you've seen him at the tourneys, um, you've seen the, um, the consequence of him wielding that massive, you know, great sword at the grand melees and the, the force he puts behind his uh, lances uh, when um, uh, they are tilting uh, at the lists. But um, he has almost like a bluish gray uh, eyes. So there's that... almost a bit of a twinkle uh, to them as you take them off. Is that like a surprising lineage type thing? Like uh... are the folks in, in Oakford... It's uh, the, so the Jamari, uh, like just as a since it's been a while uh, since we've been been back to to uh, Shadow World, the uh, at least at the time of recording, um, a reminder that like the history in Shadow World is very very old. So there's been uh, thousands of years for opportunities for people to interbreed and for right. uh, you know c c cultures to move. The what we call the Jamari, the sort of like common folk of uh, of Jamin, are the is a wide collection. Like the bodies that you found in the river, they're Jumeri, but they've got that kind of southern look to them. They've got the look uh, from Rakan or somewhere else in the, uh, somewhere in, in the, um, the uh, Rakani uh, Empire, the Phoenix Empire. Um, this guy has that Jumeri quality, but his eyes tell you he may actually have some, maybe some Sarkakar, um, or Sarkakar, uh, what do you call it, uh, blood in him. Okay. <clears throat> he sounds an awful lot like uh, an Irish wolfhound though. Maybe a pit bull. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just role playing. <laughs> Anna Banana is so happy to be back too. Oh. I think I know that Amazon was delivering something quite late, so I wonder if that's what she's yelling at. Well, Sir Kira, you might not know the plans that your lady, and she kind of laughs. Uh, the bastard and uh, her brother had hatched, but you might know where they came from. Were these just their own machinations or does this come from higher up? Um, Give us, let's see here. Will be a good secondary skill for this. I think, hmm. It sounds to me like it's diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy or public speaking. Uh, public speaking is trying to address a crowd, so it's probably diplomacy. Um, do you think it's anything oh. else? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Look at that! Once again, uh, welcoming uh, you, you uh, back here. Holy smokes. So, <laughs> he looks and kind of... Um, his shoulders slump as he looks down at her, at her body um, and uh, says... It was Lady Eustace's plan. Hmm. They saw your companions and asked after you. When they learned that they missed you at the tavern, they <sighs> intended to not miss you. Lady Eustace still harbored resentment from the outcome of your last meeting. Well, not surprising. She's never been good with grudges. Her brother probably didn't bear me any goodwill after the last tourney, but still, this has seemed rather extreme even for them. They did not intend it to go to swords. They intended to scare you and demand surrender of your sword. So just humiliation. They did not anticipate. And he kind of nods his head down to where uh, Sir Eldon's body has been dragged as you put it down. This as an outcome. Fools. This will have far reaching impact beyond their petty desire for humiliation and 
their need for getting back at me. Uh, would you, would you be willing to speak to this to my father and perhaps the king? I am a prisoner and will speak the truth of what transpired to your You're lord. Still a knight. You're still a knight. You're still sworn to an oath. I will do the same to my king, though I expect that he will not. He will take these developments poorly, as you have noted. I suspect you're right in that. <laughs> All right, honey. Anna. <laughs> Are you okay to walk? Do you need further aid? Uh, she stands himself up. My arm uh, has been rendered lame. My legs are fine. Sorry. We'll see your arm when we get to my father's palace. And he looks over he's, and he said he gestures towards where the bodies of the Sarawan are. He says. And them. Uh, Would you leave them for the horse. crows? No, I'll send somebody back for them. But I will keep uh, Lady Eustace and, and her brother, Sir Eldon. Uh, we'll, we'll take them with us and see that they're properly cared for and sent back to their family. My lady, Sir Kira, might I take them? You wish to carry them? To their father. Yes, we'll take you to my home and get you some aid first, and I will talk to my father about releasing you and the bodies to uh, return. Nemrice, mm -hmm. do you, I can't remember, do you have any wounds? Or did you astonish your fortune out of them? I know you <clears throat> you avoided losing a leg. It's a oh, busted yeah, rib, isn't I it? I think I avoided all that. I think I got, I just got, basically I just got knocked completely to zero. Didn't you take a, a, a busted rib from, um, well, let me look. from her? I thought you I had thought a- I would have written that down. Yeah, I think it's under the wounds in the middle of the character sheet at the top. So I was fairly certain that she got a busted I ribbon. I didn't write anything there. Oh, okay. And I'm not seeing anything written in my notes. I'm, I'm not saying it didn't happen. No, and I'm, I'm fairly certain it did happen uh, because I think that when okay. when we narrated it, uh, it wasn't mm -hmm. like it wasn't a, a critical thing. I think it was like a minus ten uh, to attacks. So it wasn't like okay. minus ten to other skills or to spells. It was just right. specifically for a minus ten to attacks when you move. So you just got like a rib that's a little. You know, um, that's a little busted. I don't think you have any uh, magic that relates to setting of bones or things like that, but you know that the sisters of, e of uh, Aisa, uh, they will be able to yep. address that. Now, um, Kaya or Jawar, do you guys have any, or Nimrice for that matter, do you have any uh, input for what to do with the Mercenary Mage or with the, uh, or guys, Kaya, you're getting the... the yeah, I'm, I'm not there. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any insight for what to do with the uh, Sorellan mercenary bodies uh, or the mercenary mage? We could at least move them to some shelter and cover them so that they're not left to the animals. Well, the animals will find them one way or the other. Do we drag them? Hmm. Maybe we can make a a litter that patches can pull something quick. We could bury them in shallow graves. Uh, Nim Rice. I can't remember. Yeah. Do you have any spells that that warp or shape wood? I'm looking right now. I was actually in my spell list when you mentioned. That. Oh, nice. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was looking to see anything about bones and healing and all that. Mm-hmm. 
nature's movement protection do, 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 do. plant mastery what can I do I think basically I can speed the growth of plants let's see if there's anything else yeah, I don't think there's I'm just looking through your no, stuff I don't here. think so I don't think I have anything else I think that would be the main thing mm -hmm. is I could basically maybe cause the growth to I guess it, I, I, let me read this just to make sure yeah it's just really the speed the speed of growth it's not like a, a shaping thing the way I read it yeah so growth rate is 100 times normal then I have to figure out how fast grass grows yeah <laughs> so I think what 100 times that is with your, um, you know, uh, Woodley Ways, uh, like you got trap building. Trap building, I would say, is, is you know, something that, that was translatable to building a, like a travoy or a, a litter. I think. Oh, and you got wood carving as well. So now, yeah, Nimrais uh, certainly could get something together. If you do want to bring all the bodies back, you certainly could uh, fabricate something like that. Oh, okay. It just so wouldn't yeah, be magic. It would be working with your uh, your hands itself. My skills. Sure. What about the rest of you guys? Any thoughts? I mean... They're paid mercenaries. They, they took a job. This is the outcome. I'm mm -hmm. not too worried about them. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's kind of where I come down, yeah. All right. So we will cut to, unless there's anything you guys wish to do in the, you know, hour that it takes for Kaya to go and get the horse and then ride the horse back or lead the horse back. Um, you hear the sound of... Um, uh, the, the Oakford Giant is not really a chatty Cathy, so he, unless he, you have further specific questions for him, he won't have, have anything to say. And the Mercenary Mage will be gradually coming to around the time that um, Kaya comes back. I was just going to say one thing to Chawar while we're waiting. Is, uh, yep. it, it seems your task of keeping me safe gets more difficult every day that passes. It does seem that way. I expected danger to be around, but not so sudden. Or often. I haven't seen days like this that I can recall. Well, this may be your new reality, ma'am. <sighs> well, it'll be interesting. She right. yeah. So, Kai, having had time on your own, um, yeah. anything uh, going through your mind? Uh, you are at uh, one third of your concussion hits, which means you're actually suffering a wound penalty right now. And it would only hire uh, heal back at one concussion point or concussion hit uh, per um, hour. And I think you've got some herbs as well if you wanted to try and speed that up or you can just... Uh, I wasn't sure if I did. I don't see anything on the... Let's see here. On the character sheet. Um, um, I looked... Yeah, you've Kusumar on the on the actual, like the PDF. Uh, you have... Oh, sorry, the PDF. I'm on the Rule 20 um, I sheet. I, I, I may have, have missed open. putting it on. Um, is it under? Let's see here. I thought it was under the... I looked on the other tab too, but I didn't see it there. But yeah, I could be blind. Equipment. That's... Yep, soft um, leather pouch with three doses of Kusumar petals. Oh, there we are. Yeah, so you, you do have those if you do. I'm not saying you have to, but if you are, uh, if you do want to avoid that um, that wound penalty, which I think is only minus 10 uh, per 25% you've lost. Yeah, I mean, I might as well. Okay. Uh, 5d10 plus 10, okay. Um, I mean, 
otherwise, in terms of um, what's going through my mind, mm-hmm. um, uh, honestly, it's still kind of, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, I, you know, I think, I think some, some uh, uh, relief is still, you know, very much going on because the, the, my, uh, my sister was nearly, <laughs> could have gone very badly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so relief is kind of the, the dominant feeling uh, right now, kind of still, I think I'll, I would spend most of that hour just kind of coming down from the high, um, from the adrenaline rush of, oh my God, uh, she's in danger kind of thing. Okay. All right. Uh, so and then, I forgot. Is is sorry. Uh, I forgot. Um, age wise, Dave, um, are you the older or the younger of the two of us now? With the older brother not around. Uh, mm-hmm. Kara is eighteen, and Kaya is nineteen. Okay, so she's the older sister. All right. Oh no, she's uh, younger. You're you're nineteen. I th- oh, sorry. I heard that the other way around. I thought I was 18. <laughs> uh, at any rate, so um, maybe falling into a bit of that kind of, you know, protective um, kind of mentality uh, as well and feeling the weight of that. Yeah, because you also have a lifetime of having seen how her actual brother treats her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then... Um, as that hour passes, we see Kaya kind of come, you know, trotting down the road... And wow. uh, holy smokes, look at that. Wow. That's a good roll. Yeah. Uh, so that would bring me back up to, because that's more than I, it's well beyond my max. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're back up to 75. Yep, yep. So you're feeling right as a rain. Let's see here. There we go. And Jawar. Air of my manners. Nemrice, thank you for your help for literally saving me <laughs> she's gonna give Namrice a big hug and and I don't know kind of feel she's like so shaken with what's happened she's like I I, I have totally lost my my thought and my oh I don't even know what's going on right now Namrice just grins and reaches out and just kind of scrubs her on the head <laughs> Ain't nothing of it, little pup. <laughs> you also hear a bit of a. Oh, he's got that busted yeah. rib. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing of it. I'm still fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Nimrise, you met Jawar at um, uh, the Obelisk, right at the tavern already. Right. Yeah. That's the right. tavern. Yeah. yeah, yeah so we, you guys we are well acquainted. Uh, then uh, Kai is the only one who has not met uh, Jawar. Then, uh, so. When you return, perhaps you would do. I, I imagine things are sort of a, a whirlwind here. Um, it dawns you know the introductions have not been done between Kaya and Jawar. Jawar is the one person you've not met. Uh, you did, I think, roll last time, and you recognized his robes were part of the legendary Changramai Order, uh, an order of um, uh, mercenary warrior monks from mm. uh, a secret monastery. Uh, it from uh, located on a continent called Emer. Uh, that's far to the south across the Straits of Maluria. So, you rejoin the party. Uh, the mercenary mage, the Oakford giant, uh, and the bodies of the uh, fallen are all sort of worked together on a uh, travoy that you hook up to patches. Uh, so, Kira, did you want to provide the introduction for Kaya? Yeah. Um, she'll uh, first run over and give Kaya a hug and say, uh, where did you learn to shoot like that? You were always good, but <laughs> Th- thank you. Thank you so much. I, I wasn't expecting you to just appear out of nowhere and start, was it crossbows or arrows? Uh, arrows. Arrows. <laughs> and letting arrows fly like some sort of goddess. Oh, I mean, I think uh, I job. I got lucky three times. I and got very what? lucky. Five or six <laughs> shots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I I've been practicing, and you know, a new bow doesn't hurt either. Also, and I, 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 I hug back a little bit tightly and go, and I'll but I'll whisper just to her. Um, 
and uh, you know, being pretty scared at losing you is pretty good motivation too. She gives her a squeeze on the arm. Come, I'll meet, introduce you to someone. Joar, uh, turn, and he's like probably like right behind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> directly behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Jawar is who I was going to introduce. Jawar, this is my sister, Kaya. Foster Jawar sister, will bow. Half sister. Are we half sisters or foster sisters? I can't remember. Uh, I'm adopted. You You're are. Adopted. We'll call you yeah. foster. Foster. I'm, I'm... And um, this is Jawar. He's uh, joined us since the airship arrived. He's been uh, here to watch my back, so to speak. So and, um, what you would right behind me all the time. What you would know, Jawar, uh, about the the Harazi, the the race uh, or the uh, ancestry of uh, Kaya, uh, is that they're thought to be extinct. Uh, oh, they, yeah, like the the winged folk, uh, they're thought to be have died out. Uh, some at some point, some say during the uh, the um, Wars of Dominion, uh, like six thousand years ago. So. To meet a, a Harazi in person is really quite a. Yeah, he's probably got a. You can probably see it on his face, but he's trying not to be too uh, excited about it. Mm. <laughs> I'll. Uh, what is the? This is just a cultural question for you know. Um, you know what's the relatively he, like? Jeff said the Jawar would bow. Um, it, what would be the appropriate reaction for Kaya back to? As a response, uh, I, I think like what? Uh, well, let's see here. Actually, Kai has got a panoply of uh, great. Because uh, she's not like she's the um, you know the, she's mm -hmm. she's the adopted daughter of of you know one of the most powerful noble families, but like not blood related. So she's not an heir. So also not so kind of in that weird in between space, right? Ah, uh, it could very well be. I mean. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it. I guess the thing with I, I'm not sure how Jawar necessarily intended this. Why don't you give us a? Uh, I mean, I don't want to belabor it. Either. Yeah, lore it's, history. No, check. I think it was just more of like politeness, and yeah, she no. introduced you as her sister. So. What I'm, yeah, I'm just wondering like how I should. Uh, but it's fine. I'll sure. just, I'll just, I'll just uh, nod and and and. Well, and, give us a lore uh, history. There may be some information that uh, you may that Kaya sure. may okay. draw from this. Uh, lore history. There we are. See you. Look at this, nice. guys. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Stop being so good at this game, my god. <laughs> good lord. That must be two back to yeah. Look at that, ninety-seven seventy-two. Holy uh -huh. shit. So, wow. uh, um, what y you happen to know a fair amount about the Changrmai Order? It it seems. Um, Jeff, you can tell me if this is wrong, uh, but it strikes me that this is sort of how they greet everybody. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like a sure. specific like royalty thing. It was sure. more of a... And it's different, I think. Uh, and again, Jeff, you can correct me if I got this wrong. I think that his greeting is different from the sort of like sweeping bow that you would expect for courtly people with the arm going back and whatnot. The way Jeff was describing it, I'm picturing it like a, you know, almost like a Japanese bow, like right at the yeah, waist. Yeah, exactly. Fair. Like his version of shaking your hand. Right. Oh, totally makes sense. I'll, uh, I'll politely uh, nod. Uh, I guess the other question would be: whether, Do I recognize? Do I catch his 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 expression on his face? Um, it, I'd be probably accustomed to certain reactions from people when they meet me for the first time. Yeah. I don't know if I catch it with that hood on, though. And I think that. Um, but yeah, if I did, hmm. I, I I might just smirk a little. Sure. Why don't you give <laughs> us a perception roll? Uh, and uh, did Jawar try and conceal it? No, that's what I said. He was like, the excitement would be on his face. Yeah. He, he wouldn't openly react to it, but he would definitely mm. um, be impressed that, you know. Yeah. yeah. When people see your wings, uh, Kaya, I think they're uh, you're used to a certain level of reaction right? because it's a right. very, very unusual yeah, thing. For and, sure. And like you would explain too that my like thief mentor um, has taught me how to how to make them a little bit less visible. Um, but 
See, not I don't know what this thief them. mentor that you're talking about. All I know about is a like a simple yeah. lumberjack. Sorry, yeah, the lumberjack. The lumberjack has taught me <laughs> uh, <laughs> such a useful skill for a Just lumberjack. Just a simple to have. lumberjack, you know. Simple yeah. lumberjack. Um, also, sidelines, uh, side hustle, as you know, uh, costume, um, you know, extraordinaire. <laughs> but no, uh, so I'll be, I'll be. I like this guy. Uh, I'm already getting a good vibe. Okay. <laughs> Well, he was kind of snotted the bad guys for nonstop during the fight, so he's also very good at <laughs> keeping your sister safe. Yeah, Jawar yeah. made, like, uh, he fought those uh, two uh, Sir Allen mercenaries uh, like they're children. Like, well, it, yeah. it, it's kids against the professional sparring, uh, you know. Uh, I'll probably comment on that, that I was, uh, it's, uh, you're, you're, uh, you are quite the skilled warrior, and I am grateful to you that my that my sister had you by uh, by her side. You rolled well enough too with your history check about that. So like, if you if you want to throw in some reference to a specific technique of the Changramai order or something like that, you may have recognized that because it seems I think that... more likely not the specific battle type, but maybe I would uh, I I you can supply the name. I don't know the lore, but myself, but I would probably make some uh some comparison to some other heroic figure from the order mm. that i had read about in stories sure. uh, and it reminded me of the stories my my uh, i read uh as a child of of, of this so hero why don't you give us a, a changramai lo um uh, philosophy check uh Jawar. let's see how obscure this reference ends up being See here. It's be it's a your pretty extensive skills. library I've got access to. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah, so he how uh how um niche do you think the reference is, uh Kaya? Is this sort of like a, a standard like one of the people that, that like bards mm. would sing about on on the reg? Or would this be someone that would be more of a like you clearly need to know the order to be mm. able to make this reference? Um I don't know that I would know that much. I think your roll of 211 tells us <laughs> otherwise. Fair. <laughs> Fair. I could throw okay. something out there. What if it was another, uh, specifically another mercenary monk? That would make it interestingly connected mm. to, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Noir's role. And we can, and it's easy enough because, like, as, uh, because I think you had explained the background for my characters that I had unlimited access to an extremely extensive library for the vast oh, yeah. majority of my life. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, probably obscure references to random shit is is not unheard of. <laughs> That's an interesting point, too. The fact that there is this extensive library, like, y you know, one of the secrets that uh, Kaya knows is that uh, in spite of it having the appearance of a, you know, a place of, of knowledge, it's not general purpose. There's lots of niche kind of subjects and whatnot that make up the the, um, the library at Myrna Doom. Um, this is one of those things that has an extensive amount of literature on, and you now find Kara traveling with one of these orders, one of these monks from his order. Mm. Yeah, uh, I probably won't necessarily comment on that right here this moment, but mm -hmm. that's definitely something that we're going to file away in the in the uh, the, the, the file catalog uh, yeah. to bring up later. Okay. <laughs> So then, um, with uh, introductions done, with the uh, bodies kind of secured and, and uh, prepared and ready to, to go, with your prisoners in tow, uh, the gagged mage is not, you know, uh, making a little bit of noise but can't enunciate anything. Um, I think you guys are ready to head to Murder Doom. Is there anything you guys wish to do along the way? The next thing you will, you will, uh, or the next sort of waypoint you'll hit is the, the um, cabin where you'll meet up with um, uh, Captain uh, Lazar. And that is... So, and as he sees you, I think he's waiting outside, probably like smoking a pipe or something like that. And he sees you guys coming down with uh, the prisoners in tow. And uh, he quickly hops up. I imagine, Kai, you filled him in to... Well, let me ask you this. What do you tell him when you come back? Uh, you're you're uh, not injured, but I mean, like you um, you've suffered, you know, a grazing hit uh, by by the fact that you were down some concussion hits. What what would you have told Captain? Uh, La, uh, La, I keep saying Lazar, Lavar. 
Uh, just think Burton, and you'll you'll get yeah, exactly. it right every time. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of reading, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, gosh, I don't know. Um, this is someone you have also uh, only recently met. Yeah, I think I'd be pretty guarded for now. Okay, and and not necessarily talk. I mean, other than the obvious that we were able to. You know, um, bring um, Circura back. Okay. Um, so I don't think I would mention too much. More. I think he hops up and he kind of, uh, you know, you know, taps out his pipe and then quickly starts walking towards you uh, with uh, his eyes on Circura first, and then he sort of looks over at uh, Jawar and he says, "What happened?" Who's he looking at? Jawar. Oh, we were beset by some local uh, children of a neighboring duke. Uh, king. The kingdom of oh, king. Oh, they're keys of king. The, yep. A neighboring king, and they brought some mercenaries with them, and they'll point to the sort of two prisoners they have with them. Uh, he lo looks over. Um, an attack, then? What was the reason? They're looking for me. For you? Yes, they he... thought to embarrass me by forcing me to relinquish my family sword or something to the such, and it came to blows. And now we've slain two of Oakford's children. <laughs> Uh, you can see Lavar is he's not thrilled with that no uh, but he turns back and he says uh, Lady Kerry you're uninjured though uh, not not injured no but Kaya was hurt and so was Nemrice he looks over at you Nemrice you were injured and he kind of looks you over uh. They got a good hit on my on my ribs, but I'll live. And he nods. Then more bad news uh, to deliver to your father. Oh, we really should not tarry then. And he, um, as he's uh, uh, making his way. Uh, he sort of joins you guys in, in the, the walk the bridge uh, that you uh, found those uh, or near where you found those bodies uh, Sir Kira that's actually going to be your next sort of stop it's only about 5 or uh, 10 minutes away from here um, your mind obviously is swirling with a lot of different you know things that have happened uh, but the uh, if you don't uh, bring up the bodies by the time you reach the bridge, uh, Captain uh, uh, Zedek will. No, I should mention it right away. Okay. What do you say? Um, so, like, we're talking about the bodies that have been killed by the Shuriken? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, should we, like, on my way here, um, there are bodies just up the creek, uh, that had been slain by the same device that we showed you at the inn. And he says, the bodies, the, there was rain last night. Yeah, uh, they would be probably a few days old. I think that's right. Isn't that right? Yeah, they, like when you found them, they were, they had been there they were at, at the oh, most they're... like four days. Yeah, they were already bloating, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but what what had happened? You may remember that uh, there was a pretty bad storm that blew in uh, last night, which meant that the if there's rain in the mountains, the streams go up. Right. So he says, so "Well, I don't know if we need to investigate them or do something, bring them in. Um, not sure who they are." Now, did you tell someone in um, Cloak and Bay? We told the Duke about it. Right. 
so were you leaving them uh leaving it for him to collect those bodies or send someone to collect the bodies or yeah i think that's what we had intended previously okay so then he says then if the duke is the duke believes that uh he is uh, to send someone to collect the bodies we'll leave it to him if they are still there uh we should not tarry any longer than uh we have to and unless there's anything else you guys want to talk to Captain Zedek about, we will cut to you guys arriving at Myrna Doom. So this is the approach that you guys see. Uh, there's the reflective surface of Larry Wiss uh, right before you, the cold water. And you can almost picture, um, probably your eyes are playing tricks on you, but people you know, moving in the windows of that far off, uh, both the far off tower. And it is probably, because you're moving on foot, it's probably getting closer to the end of day. So the shadows are quite long. It's not dark yet because it is summertime. The shadows are getting longer from uh, the trees uh, that surround the uh, path. And you can hear the sound of women's voices singing from the sisters of Aisa, the chapel or the tower on the... Uh, let me think here. That'll be the north side of the uh, of uh, the falls. When you guys it... approach, uh, you will be passing. It sort of goes up and along here, and then uh, up a switchback path that leads into the community of Myrna Doom, and then from there you make your way to the actual keep itself. So all the way along, hidden behind these. Uh, outcropping here, there is uh, the town uh, or the village of uh, Myrna Doom. And as you guys are making your way up there, the um, everyone's busy. You know, it's it's summertime, so there's people either who are heading out for hunting or coming back from hunting or, you know, heading out for uh, camping or camping for um, logging. There are logging camps deeper in the mountains. Uh, and, oh, you know what? I have... I think, I think we would... Um... I take my cloak off and turn it inside out and cover the bodies of at least the, um, um, the brother and sister, if I could. Sure. The less this gets out or it's notified, you know, we don't want their insignia or their heralded devices seen by someone that they've been dragged in dead on a horse yeah yeah and each of them would have had uh, traveling cloaks as well too so you can take those and um if you're taking yours off to do that same thing too the oakford giant seems eager to to help with that uh, he isn't keen on seeing his um you know his uh, former master's children or his master's uh, children um displayed out like you know um the catches brought back from a hunt um, as you guys are making your way through the end, uh, Kai, I take it you are keeping uh, up with with sort of everyone. You're you're staying with the the group as opposed to flying ahead. Yep. Okay. Uh, what you can see in the uh, crowd is a familiar face. Regat Chain. Hmm. Um, like, what's he doing? He uh, sees you and, and has that kind of like, when he meets eye contact with you, he kind of gestures with his head, like, we need to have, we need to speak. I'll, uh, I'll nudge um, Kira and say, hey, um, I'm seeing my, uh, my, um, oh gosh, what would, no, if I'm the apprentice, I've seen my master, I see my, uh, the, my, um, yeah. my, my lumber, Jack, I'm right not there. surprised that you need. To, like, <laughs> you're not surprised that you need to like just disappear because you always just disappear. So she just kind of like nods. All right, mm. <laughs> and I'll scamper off. Okay. Um, do you keep your wings uh, unfurled or concealed when you travel around Myrna Doom? Um, yeah, when I'm out in public like this, I, I tend not to be too like. I know how to keep them concealed. But uh, I guess it's more of a, like, um, I just don't make a big deal. Like, I don't go out of my way to make them obvious. So, yeah, I'm trying to be 
well, you know, we'll keep it simple. Yes, I'm concealing them when I'm in okay, public. Okay, so they're That's just flat against your back and you got your cloak over. Okay. Uh, the reason being is that, like, if you got your wings out, it's something that would draw uh, attention, so it'd be harder to be more inconspicuous in the crowd. Yeah, they, yeah, they would know yeah. it's no, exactly. you making your way through as opposed to exactly. a small, yeah. So you make your way through, and the um, as the rest of them, you know, go along, you're, you're certain you can catch up to everyone, particularly if you're able to take to the skies. Um, the... Uh, uh, so uh, Shane says, as you uh, you know, as you kind of come into the hall or to the hall into the alleyway, and he says, "And what's what's the trouble with that?" Oh, sister, getting up to trouble, but I got her out of it. Is there a reason you're bringing the oak for giant back in chains, as it were? The. He, uh, he and some friends decided to, uh, attack my sister. To kill, or...? It certainly seemed that way. Now that's curious. What would the King of Oakford gain from that? Something to consider... I don't mean to add to your troubles, but if you could bring to our Lord's attention, there is... Some of the hunters came back and they saw white smoke coming from the, um, uh, the Deep Pine Lodge. And you, you're familiar enough with the region. The Deep Pine Lodge is a logging camp because mm -hmm. you, you know, like the, the particular types of big white uh, white pines that are logged here, uh, it's, you know, the, the more you do it, the deeper back into the woods you need to go to get the things. So they've set up one that's about a uh, day's travel into the woods. Uh, what white smoke uh, entails, each of these lodges, because they're, you know, deep in the woods and they're, you know, Unlike the trip between Myrna Doom and Cloven Bay, this is into the wilds, and there are dangerous things that can be out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Wildlife, garks, um, other sorts of, of nasty things that uh, may come out. White smoke means that they have t um, basically sealed the lodge and are in need of help. That's interesting. That's very ominous. Do you think this has anything to do with you had mentioned uh, some curious activities at the Winter Watch Shrine up in the Old Home Mountains. Do you think they might be related? I don't know, uh, but I haven't uh, spoken uh, to uh, I haven't spoken to them yet, but what I hear is Liliana seems to be down some students. Or some uh, scholars. Uh, For, and uh, Liliana would be, she'd be the head of the sister? Uh, no, Liliana is actually the head of the library. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. She seems to have lost some, uh, what I heard from the library uh, or, or the scuttlebutt from in town, she seems to have lost some scholars. They think they departed in the, in the middle of the night, but when I ask around... No one saw them. And if none of your people saw them, then where did they go? Uh, well, so he would not be aware uh, because you guys have only just come back. He wouldn't know about the bodies found in the river by uh, Sir Kira either. You may not remember, Andrew, but the... Yeah, so I, what, I, I'm drawing a blank on in, that. In the first session, what... Uh, Dave, why don't you tell... Uh, Oh yeah, that this would, would have been, I, you know, you guys traveling yeah. along, you would have told Kaya about this. What did you find? Oh, was that the the dude who had a message for her? Uh, no, the bodies. Oh, yeah, the, With the, the three stained bodies. hands. With the stained hands? Remember they had the ink stained hands. Oh, I forgot about that. Ink stained hands and those are the bodies that had been killed with the shuriken? Yes. Okay. The shrieking. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Similar to the weapon, the dark weapon that attacked me 
uh, when we were at the inn, which you also missed. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Kai was busy. She had shit to do in, uh, in Murder Doom. Mm -hmm. Shit to do. Doctor's appointments and all sorts of things. So what, uh, <laughs> let's see here. What um, she would have described to you mm -hmm. is, uh, let's see here. Where's the attacker? You know what I've done is, I, I've done what I always do is name something clever. Yep, you and your clever <laughs> names. <laughs> and named it something you can't remember. And now I can't remember what I named it. Uh, <laughs> so it's just a matter of, because I think I call it the mysterious interloper or something like that. Of, I'm yeah, a of dumbass. course. The intruder. Here we go. But I'm nothing if not consistent. <laughs> so there you go. This, uh, Jeff and Dave, either of you, do you want to tell Andrew about your uh, experience with the intruder? I've been talking way too much. Go ahead. Jeff. Well, we um, arrived. I, I can't remember the name of that inn now. It's been uh, the, so obelisk. Long. the obelisk. The obelisk. <laughs> And uh, in the middle of the night, or sometime, the this um, undead sort of monk came in and came after Sir Kira. Uh, we were able to fight him off, but he escaped. Was it like a pu I can't remember a puff of smoke or a puff? Of, like he like, disappeared. Um, wispy, oily um, uh, clouds of. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he definitely had uh, magical abilities, but uh, very dangerous foe. And he said a word in Dark Elf. Diari. Yeah, Diari. That was, what, what did he say? Uh, I can't remember the word either. Something about coming. Death. Death, yeah. <laughs> Basically threatening the life of Serkira. And what Serkira mm. could fill in, because I think she's the one who saw that is when he said that word, one of those dark iron shurikens would appear in his hand. Oh. Yeah, he literally summoned his weapon out of dark magic. What yeah. uh, Sir Kira would tell you as well, the reason the shuriken are uh, portentous is of the three uh, stripped bodies that uh, he found in the stream, on the way out to Cloven Bay. Uh, the bodies had uh, ink-stained but soft hands, so, so he made them think of the many of the scholars who make their way out to Myrna Doom. But each of them had a single wound on them, and one of them, uh, Sir Kira could find that there was a broken bit of what looked to be a strange curved bit of blade, but because of how damn smart she is, she recognized what it might have been, laid it down in the sand, and then slowly used it as a like stencil to create the shape of mm -hmm. the shuriken. Okay, so I, I without having without actually repeating all of that here yep. for the viewers, um, so I'll relay that to Reggett, um, and then I'll kind of speculate because I, you know, so if they had soft hands, is that the conclusion that the like? I think I could then draw that you know. You said that there were three scholars who were missing? Uh, th there are four that are missing from here. Sir so Kira found three bodies, although all three of them seem to be hung up in one way or another in the stream, caught by right. okay. tangles of oak. Yeah. So I'll tell Regged that I think we found three of them. Uh, I'll talk about the shuriken, but I'll also mention this intruder. Um specifically because of the nature of the rumors around the 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 shrine um this is i'll ask him actually you know you said that there are there's weird activity up at the shrine do you because i've been hearing other rumors around town um about the sisters of is it isa or I, 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 iesa yep um and if there's more activity there, given what they have historic, the fact that they historically have watched out for and guarded against creatures of undeath, this creature that my sister describes, I have never heard of anything like this. 
and I worry, could this be so important of, of... Your sister and Jawar did mention, I think, a name that they thought might be associated with this, something that oh. is indicative of these. Oh. Um, Jeff or Dave, do you remember what the order was? I did uh, have it written down a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> the monks. You must. Have, you must have given it a witty name like Kevin does. Uh, the monks of Yarth. Yeah, really. Yeah, Yarth. That's it. Yarth. So he, he hears that. Yeah. He. Uh, the name doesn't ring a bell to him, but he, I mean, he is familiar with the Iron Wind, as all of you are. Uh, that is. Uh, a force that one of the forces that wiped out the uh, um, most of Ulashak. Like Ulashak is the sh the kingdom uh, that once, or the realm that was once the realm of the Sea Drake. Part of the reason it was annihilated is waves of undead and demonic forces that uh, came in during the Wars of Dominion, uh, destroying you know uh, entire cities and uh, small, uh, you know, duchies that would be kingdoms uh, in uh, present day. Utterly erased from the surface of Jaemon uh, by the forces of uh, the Iron Wind. Mm. And that is something against which the Sisters of Aisa are for the most part uh, pacifists. Uh, they and we're back. <laughs> and we're back. What um, uh what the Sisters of Aisa, though they are uh, pacifists, uh, they are guardians against the undead. So, right. if an agent of the Iron Wind, or agents of the Iron Wind, are taking an interest in the fate of Sir Kara yeah. and the Vinciés, uh, I like, perhaps these attacks on my sister are no coincidence either and so although Oakford, that... that that confuses me unless something I'll put up feelers uh, it, it wait weren't weren't you supposed to come back with Halen with whom sorry uh, Sir Kira's brother he was supposed to be back with oh. everyone else uh, yes, he was. I'm, I have no idea. And um, he's not dead, is he? Andrew does not know the answer to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what Kaya would know, um, he just didn't come back. Yeah, that's what I had assumed that so far from when I was here last time with you guys, all that you had said was that um, our brother just didn't come back and Dave like I don't know does Kira know anything more or um, she has suspicions and she has what little she's learned from the others right probably I, I don't know if you've and if you haven't shared that with Kaya that's totally cool so I don't think we've I, had time yeah we haven't and if any and at any rate if 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 Kyra's um, worried I think I would not be sharing that like now we're getting into the realm of like I have concerns and everything about larger machinations, but mm, that's probably that's that's private family business. Well, we could have um, talked about it on the way. Yeah, um, we just wouldn't have talked about it in front of the Oakford Giant. Um, we right, would, like, right. You know, okay, drop back or gone ahead or something like that. And yeah, she would have told you that uh, Halen decided to pursue a life of like a merchant prince kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he'd so, always said that this place was. You know, like a dead end for a bunch of bastards. So he, <laughs> he, he didn't. He never looked very highly on Myrna Dune in the first place. So, yeah, I think. So I won't relay any of our suspicions to Reggett, but I probably would not. My demeanor would probably at least betray that uh, I am not pleased at all. <laughs> by the fact that, that he, and that by extension, the family is not pleased. But yeah. that's all I'll, I'll give out. Sure. So then. Um... Shane will ask, he'll leave it by, he'll ask around, but he does, again, you know, it sounds like there, there is a lot, but if they have, uh, if the camp has set up uh, the white smoke, it means they're in danger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we're, if, 
as he goes off to do that, I'll 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 say my goodbyes to him and try and then make my way to yeah. catch up to the others. Uh, Nemrice, would you give us a perception check too? Uh, you have been around uh, Murdoon certainly long enough to get the you know get a read on oh. Regat. <laughs> so I think that you you can tell like Regat Shane is a. Uh, he, he he's sort of a, a like a leader in the in a the with the lumberjack kind of part of the uh, community uh, in uh, Myrna Doom, but I think it, you have gotten a pretty good read that there's more going there's more to him than than meets the eye. He seems to have at, to ask pointed questions. He's very friendly with you, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, he's someone who asks questions that you think. Uh, would be beyond the concern likely of a lumberjack and not in a you know uh, not in a uh, you know nosy or overly curious kind of way it's it's in a someone who seems to have a, a reason for asking those questions not out of idle curiosity and I'll leave it to you to decide how you feel about uh, about that but you definitely did see uh, him and Kaya uh, he gave a sort of a a fairly obtrusive uh, look to Kaya, and he saw uh, that she sort of disappeared off. So, something for further study. <laughs> Before you guys reach the um, the actual keep itself, I think that Kaya is able to meet up with you or catch up to you guys. What's the intent with the Mercery Mage and the Oakford Giant and the bodies? What do you guys want to do? Turn them over, or do you wish to bring all of this before uh, Lord Vinci? Mm, I don't think we need to bring the bodies up necessarily, although... Uh, no, not the mercenaries. There's got to be somebody at the... Uh, uh, somebody at the keep that we can get these. <laughs> Here, here's Sir Kira and Joar going, you know, the non main entrance again, or <laughs> sneak around the side. But uh, yeah, we need to get like the bodies discreetly brought in um, and alert somebody at the keep, like a seneschal type person, to that we'll need to prepare the um, the bodies for travel and. Kaya, I think you have uh, trusted members of staff that you know that you can arrange that with. I would probably know that Kaya has connections. <laughs> yeah. Kaya, can you make arrangements that we can be discreet about what we're bringing in? Yeah. Um, I think I will um, make further subtle movements around to make my way ahead of them, uh, just on foot though. Um, okay. Because I, I, I have ways of, I assume that I know of faster routes to get to. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, and I'll. Uh, and I'll go talk to, um, you know, whatever equivalent head of our our uh, <laughs> security I have, and like, we'll secure some roads. Sure, no problem. So, so you are met at the door by Kaya and uh, two uh, kind of members, uh, trusted members of the uh, of the, the house guard, and they're going to arrange for the storage of the bodies for now. Um, uh, I will I will move over to the Oakford Giant and just say we're taking steps to be extra discreet. Um, Kaya, I think when when you return, you will find uh, like one of the advantages of the um, the way that you approach Myrna Doom is that you really can't unless you're going well off the the actual path. Uh, you, you're spotted well before you get there. People will know mm -hmm. that you're coming. You're moving along the shores of uh, uh, Leary Wiss. And that means that uh, Lord Udic uh, will be waiting. So Lord Venti would know that everyone is, is returning. Um, are mm -hmm. you making an effort to avoid him to get to these guards? Or do you want to give him uh, a heads up of what's happened here? No, in fact, if he's like readily available right there, I, I would probably actually be quite upfront. 
Okay. So I think, them. you know, when There's, I know better than to try to hide something from him anyway. <laughs> so you can see, you probably see him down in the main courtyard uh, of the keep who, and he's getting kind of, there's like an honor guard that is getting ready. And he looks over um, and he's got a big smile on his face. And he says, uh, Kaya, <laughs> it's, the day is finally here. The, the day? Well, you know that uh, this is when Halen's supposed to be back. Yeah. And oh, the sorry, twins. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> when you want to go straight and talk to him, go right ahead. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yep. Make a beeline and then and then sound like an idiot. Um, no. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll kind of... <laughs> I'll try to hide it on my face, but my face is definitely about to give one of those like, ooh, okay. kind of reactions. Of, um, yeah, about that. I, I, and I'll, I'll, I don't know. I don't even know what to what to say to him that won't anger him. Maybe, in fact, I'll just switch topics and go. Um, Father, I think we have some other pressing matters we need to dis we need to deal with. He looks at you. Would you give us? Let's see here, um, Jeffrey. Would you kind of give us a D one hundred exclamation mark roll, and then uh, Kaya? Uh -oh. <laughs> would you give a? Let's see here. Oh, not too. Vicious. Not too terrible, yeah. Um, give us a... Let's say trickery roll. Oh, okay. Uh, I know trickery technically is really for sleight of hand stuff, but we can use it for this as well, too. All right, so actually, hmm. yeah, you are... Uh, definitely uh, good at um, not only maneuvering around in the air, but maneuvering your way through delicate conversation. Because he turns and uh, he trusts your your judgment. What trouble? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> Kira was assailed on the road. What? Yes. Is she okay? She's fine. She's fine. And Halen? I don't know. He, his eyes go. What do you mean you don't know? I don't, I don't, I don't know. He wasn't there. He hasn't, he, he hasn't come. What do you? I mean, he hasn't come. I don't, I, we don't, we don't know. But there's been no word. He. And at this point, I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of, now my face will change to one of like, like deep, sympathy and like oh god yeah okay i knew this was coming i'll try to like reach out to his like wrist to lightly touch it like there is few things um that you've seen uh where lord avantier um shows that he has been wounded mm -hmm. and the last time you saw this was when Halen made a reference to his mother, to Halen's mother who died. Um, this appears to even eclipse that. Um, there's a he, he just is is speechless and trying to reconcile himself to the fact that uh, with the information or the the development you just shared with him. He he he. I mean. He could just be delayed. We've had no word. Something may just have held him up. We don't know. The twins have returned. I saw them. Oh. And Halen did not. Was anyone else injured? Uh, oh gosh, I need to move the thing so I can see here. <laughs> um, in our, I traveled with, wait, Nimrise, I was with you. We traveled together to go to them, right? You weren't already there. That's correct. We, we right. backtracked. 
uh, and and uh, Javar, you were or you were already there, <laughs> and you weren't, but you weren't injured. Um, so yeah, Nimrice went with me. Um, he was he he fell in the battle. We were able to revive him. I was hurt, but I'm okay. Um, we managed to deal with the with the attackers. We have captured who was it? Who would be so bold as to strike on the on the path in mm. Myrna Doom? Um, yeah. Um, and I lowered my voice. That one, we we may need to talk in a more quiet quarters. And he steps forward. Who was it? In a lower voice. It was. It was. Have we changed her name now? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was. It was Lady Eustace. The Oakford, chill. Yes. So it would seem. Is she dead? Yes. Lady Eustace is dead. Um, I might have had something to do with that. And well, by something, I mean I, I killed her. If she attacked her, if she attacked uh, Kara, oh, then there was you no were... question in my mind that she was not going to. Yes, I, I acted on impulse. And then I hope her eternal soul burns. Uh, you could be reasonably sure of that. I made sure it was painful. Was she alone? Did she attack alone? No, she had a she had a, a mage with her, who we now have in custody, and the giant. I, I'm, Andrew's forgetting the full name of the <laughs> the Oakford giant. Oakford giant. Yeah, she had the giant with. Well, we'd probably know of him. He, I kind of he knows. Is of he him. like the mountain? In, in kind terms of, of like yeah, he, like if I were to just say yeah. the giant, we know who we're talking about. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, and Elden, yes, right. Sir Elden was, or Elden was with them, and then some, some, you know, ruffians they had with them. Wait, is Elden Oakford alive? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> that one's not on me. <laughs> that one would be your dear daughter. No, that was the White Wolf. Oh, right. George's, right. George's, that George's character. Spell, that was the white, right, the White Wolf was, was with me too. my brother. And we... Right. Yep, yep. <laughs> so he... Venti... He has the look of... Uh, I think you would think of it as... Um, I mean, it's a man reeling. Yeah, you know, it's does, just. Does he even know about the first attack on Kira by the? So I will also tell him about that. We don't need to like repeat. Yeah, yeah. Too much, but yeah, I'll relay that as well. And uh, you know, like <laughs> you think that's bad. Buckle up. Yeah. As uh, he, I said, he takes father, a, this one. He takes in perfect silence. Mm. And uh, the thing he says uh, is just it's his back to his like his lordly voice and he dismisses everyone from the courtyard and he says when they return bring them to my private sanctum and he says that in the shift in tone of voice I'll just simply kind of n nod and, and half bow uh, yes, Father. He takes about three steps away, and then he stops before you're able to leave. He says, and Kaya? I'm already half-turned, and I'll look back. You did well to protect your sister. And he turns and heads inside. <laughs> Again, that rigid, you know, uh, uh, kind of controlled, commanding uh, gait uh, that you know so well from when he has been uh, you know, laying down the law, as it were, to uh, to those lesser. So, as you guys come riding up, you're met by Kaya and a strangely empty courtyard. I think, Sir Kerry, you would have been aware of the preparations and the sort of welcoming that was intended uh, to welcome 
your brother and the twins back, all of that is gone. Uh, it's almost like you can see, you know, like um, like a wedding that didn't go off because the bride never showed up or something like that. Like you can see there's probably, you know, like candles and whatever else, like things that are set up as if there's going to be a celebration, but there's no people. Yeah. And things haven't been lit and, you know, the lights are coming down low, so it's only the... It's even more empty than you would normally see it. I think that the the mood as you're walking in is kind of like almost a house in grieving. Kaya, yeah, I think it's the extra quiet that throws me off a little bit. It's like there's still normally a couple of guards walking around and there's nobody here and you're like... Yeah. Uh, what you do see, uh, though, is uh, this will be uh, just something that you would know a uh, Nimrice uh, is Sister Awen, one of the uh, members of um, the uh, Sisters of Isa. Uh, she is one of the only ones waiting with Kaya, I think. And she steps out and looks, uh, kind of looks you, you're much taller than she is because, you know, you're an elf. And she says, you're injured. My chest. She when I breathe. Uh, says, "Wait," and she says something, uh, and you almost feel like um, a swirl of cold air across your face. Refreshing, not uh, cold, not like chilling or, or anything. It's it's like a, you know, when you take in fresh uh, winter air, right? That crisp, you know, clean kind of feel to it. That's what sort of swirls mm -hmm. around you. Her eyes glow uh, blue for a moment. She nods and begins bringing her, ha her hand towards you, looks up at you, hmm? like looking for your permission. Yes. She lays her hand on, on your, uh, right on your chest. Once again, speaks that word and you can feel a flush of like, you know when you drink something really cold and it kind of cuts, you can feel it spreading out from you first thing in the morning. That's the mm -hmm. feeling that kind of goes through you. And as soon as it finishes passing, it no longer hurts to breathe. And your rib is mended. I'll uh, relay that. Are, are the giant and mage still with them? Uh, where did you want? I'm assuming they were taken uh, to like the, you know, the dungeon yeah. or something like that. Yeah, okay. Because uh, I would have probably had time to relay that to the guards to meet them somewhere and do that okay um but i'll i'll um i'll say i'll kind of once this is done obviously i'll wait but then i'll say um father is expecting us uh so the uh sister awen says i will take my leave and uh she looks at you nimrice and says i would have thought you would have learned and hits you don't fight things bigger than you Oh, well, it wasn't she's... bigger to begin with. <laughs> she kind of shakes her so... head, smiles, and then uh, departs the uh, the keep. You know she's going to head back down through the town to the bridge leading over to the other side of uh, the cold water stream, uh, and then over to the uh, chapel of uh, the Keeper of Souls. So, anything you guys wish to... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was fucking cute <laughs> anything you guys wish to uh, talk about uh, before you reach uh, the uh, his private sanctum Kai is there anything you wish to uh, share with the others or are you keeping your cards close to your sh chest until um <sighs> Nothing I can do about the new news I have from Shane just now. So keeping that for now and we'll talk when we, there's a lot going on. And I think, you know, knowing the tone and not even the tone, I don't need to know the tone. I'll, I'll turn to Kira uh, or uh, yeah, uh, uh, Kyra and say, I'm get, I'm pronouncing it wrong, aren't I? It's, it's Kira or Kyra? Kira. Kira. Um, he, um, 
I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't keep it from him. He was, he was immediately, every, he was just so excited about our brother returning and I couldn't, I couldn't, I had to tell him. I told him about the attacks on you. I told him about his, his, he's in one of his moods, the scary mood. Here as like, you can almost see like the weight <clears throat> lifting from her shoulders as you're talking. She's like, you didn't need to say all that. You could have just stuck past him and said you didn't know. For a for a mistress of secrets, you sure aren't very good at keeping secrets from father. You should remember whom I'm collecting the secrets for. <laughs> Besides, <laughs> there are more. Way, there are. Hmm. I don't just protect my sister with my bow. There are some things that you don't need to have to bear. And there are things that I am in a unique position to be able to to relay and do and shield you from. Well, thank you. Um, I believe the captain's work will be much easier now. You'll just need to fill in some details. And, uh, yeah, I feel like I don't need to expend as much energy on father as I may have thought I had to. Okay. That was my hope. Uh, the captain accompanies, uh, you all. And if, um, they question it, uh, Sir Jawar, when, when, or Sir Jawar, <laughs> I'm suddenly knighting you. Uh, Jawar, yes. if, you, if you look back, you can see that uh, he sort of nods as if, like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are brought in, and uh, it is to a part of uh, the tower uh, that you've been to um, in, in the uh, Tower of Myrna Doom that you've been past many times. But, Sakira, you're going to carry on uh, and memorize you as well. But you're not quite as familiar with these, but Sir Kira, you've been running up and down these halls since you were able to stand. But Caius stops at one point on the tower and makes her way over to a wall. And you're not sure what is going on, but after pressing a hidden panel, the wall <laughs> and creaks open, revealing a hidden chamber. What is this? You've been completely unaware of this. Kaya does not seem surprised. Well, clearly not. She knew where this was. One less secret. <laughs> so in this room, as you make your way in, uh, the room is adorned with objects that bear the crest of the sea drake. It's very similar to the symbol that you saw the priest, uh, the, the cult of the Sea Drake priest had, though instead of a black backing to the uh, Sea Drake, there is instead a silver backing. And you know this is the symbol of Ulashak. What you can see around are artifacts from that long fallen kingdom. It's not unusual for Patriots or those trying to claim to the fading glory of, of uh, Ulashak and the realm of the Sea Drake to try and dress themselves up with these things, but your keen eye for history, uh, Sir Kara, tells you that these are the genuine article. Hmm. You can see that uh, within there is another table or another um, desk, I should say, and your father is standing in front of it. And nearby, there is a table on which a long, about, um, it looks like a small coffin, almost, but it is a uh, lacquered chest, like a sea chest, that's the kind you would bring on a, on a voyage. He has his back to you as the door opens, and as you walk in, uh, you can hear your father, uh, without turning, says Zedek 
how could you have left him? And uh, this is after the door has uh, been closed behind all of you. Uh, Nimrice, you've never been in here either. This is uh, completely new. And Captain uh, Lavar kind of shifts in his place and says, the boy has had a mind of his own. You've known that. And uh, Lord Ventier responds, or perhaps he heard stories of his uncle's exploits and decided that was favorable to taking up his own duties. And he turns around and Sir Kira, it's rare that you've seen your father um, in a state of fury. You're not sure you've seen him angrier than what you see him right now. And he seems staring directly at Captain uh, Lavar. Whisper over to Kira, I told you. <laughs> Captain Lavar uh, says, kind of slowly shakes his hand and he says, Udik, I tried. He... And uh, Lord Udik says, he has too much of his mother in him. Or maybe just too much of Halen. Kira then... steps forward and goes, Father, we, we knew... You must have known. He, he used to say things about about Myrna Dune that was not favorable long before he left. He always looked at this place as almost beneath him, even though it was home. He's got the look of confusion on him that parents can have when they have a blind spot for their children. Yeah. You know. Um, I didn't think he wouldn't come home, but surely you saw him you know, the distaste at some of the the stables even, or I don't know, size of his room. <laughs> He's, you can tell that this is hard truths for him to hear. And he is just um, struggling. You can, his little, his little, his bottom lip is, is, uh, is trembling. Um, he's choking back rage, but clearly doesn't want to, ex to take it out on you. Uh, Captain uh, Lavar takes a step next to you, uh, Sir Kira, and he says, You see, Halen has, as Kira says, much of himself, but. And he looks at uh, Udik when he brings, uh, Udik brings his eyes up. What do you think? We said when uh, Sarala said she wanted to move across the world and live in a ruin with a stranger. And you can see your father's eyes are, they're heavy and um, there are tears that are forming, but he's too um, stoic to let it form, I suppose. But you can see them reflected in the candlelight around here. Um, he trembles ever so uh, slightly. And then uh, Captain Lavar says, but your daughter, and he stands, uh, puts his hands on her. Your daughter stands here and with you. And he nods. Kira. I'm a fool. who had plans. And with the attack on your life and the death of the Oakford children, 
a disappearance. Things are moving. And I've been made all the more a fool for having thought I could will something into existence and in secret. What do you mean? Do you think it's coincidence, <laughs> my daughter, that you were raised among three sons of a notorious pirate? You were raised alongside a protector who would stand by you. He gestures at Kaya. No, it's like you were deliberately putting walls around me and trying to keep me from some unheralded danger. I brought them here so that a king would have his protectors. You recall what I told you of the relics of the sea drake? I think so. The crown to be worn by the king the crown? of Ulashak. The amulet to be uh, worn by the advisor to the king and the sword of the sea drake to serve as a weapon for the king's protector. And he moves over to the chest and he throws two old clasps on it and creaks open hinges that haven't opened properly for uh, perhaps centuries. And inside is a dagger. But this dagger has a green, a sea green blade with slightly scalloped edges and a delicate tracery of silver on it. The hilt guard is of clear blue green tinted lane. Lane is like um, steel strength glass. And there's a form of fish fins that cup around the hilt. It sits in a cradle much bigger than is necessary. And he lifts this thing out as if it is a delicate or perhaps a holy relic. Picks it up, places it in his hand, and he stares reverently at this for a moment. And then with a flick of his hand to the side, it suddenly lengthens. <laughs> and it is the length of a broadsword with the same characteristics. He turns and says, in my mind, I had a foolish scene of you receiving your knighthood from me at this moment. I should have known then when you came with the, rec the recognition of the Baron. Kira. And he kind of holds it in open hands. This is the sword of the Sea Drake. How do you come by the sword of the sea drake, Father? That's, yeah, kind that's, of not an item, that's not an item that would just be lying around somewhere. Kira. My name. The name I was given by my parents. 
is not Udik Ventier. My real name is Prince Kier Ianis. I am the heir to the throne of Elisa and a direct descendant of the kings of Ulishak. And with that, we will bring our session to a close. <laughs> Boom! So Dave, just one little mechanical thing I will give you before we wrap up the session. Wow. The Sword of the Sea Drake, it has many abilities that you sort of need to discover, but what is immediately evident, it is plus 35 to hit. It does double concussion damage on all hits. Mm. And at will, it can become a dagger, a broadsword, or a two-handed sword. Mm. At will. We end our session with Sir Kira taking the blade, and it feels as if your entire life has been built for you to take up this blade. Now, uh, we're over time, so let me do a very quick uh, wrap up here, guys. For those listening at home, thank you so much. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us for chapter five of the um, uh, er so Errors of Sea and Sorrow. Uh, adventure. Uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, Rollmaster 2nd Edition slash Rollmaster Classic, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section of the video, and I'll endeavor to respond in a timely fashion. Um, in addition, uh, you can reach me on uh, Twitter at Dungeon Musings, and by email, my email address is dungeonmusings at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, where uh, we have a channel now dedicated to this campaign. So we have a Errors of Sea, a Rollmaster Errors of Sea and Sorrow uh, uh, channel, and you are welcome to join us there. Um, in addition, uh, you can find uh, channels dedicated to every other game we run on the channel, as well as a bunch of other great groups like Finding a Group. Uh, if you're looking to find a game uh, that you can play in, uh, the Finding a Group channel uh, is regularly has people looking for people to uh, join a, wild, a wide variety of both old school and uh, new games. So you're welcome to join us over there and see if you can find folks to play with. Um, the charity that benefits from our um, uh, that we uh, support with the uh, channel is uh, our Hero Save Villages campaign. Is the SOS Children's Villages International Charity. Uh, at present, we're still having difficulty with the fundraising platform that they're using, so we can't afford, we can't have any further uh, donations uh, to that. But I'm hoping to have that sorted out within uh, the week. So uh, at the time of recording, hopefully this will have been replaced. But um, the last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our players. So. Jeffrey, Dave, Will, Andrew. God, it feels good to be back. The vacation was terrific, but boy, I missed you guys. And for everyone listening at home, too. Thank you so much for uh, joining us back. And thank you, everyone. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to respond. Thank you, everybody, for the welcome back as well, too. It has been, it was a lovely uh, break, uh, but uh, I'm glad to be back. I'm happy to see so many uh, familiar faces and friendly faces in the uh, chat as well, too. Thank you very much for the welcome back. Everybody, welcome back yourself. Uh, with that, we'll be back playing uh, another session of this on Friday, uh, if you're listening to this live. Um, otherwise, uh, I hope that uh, this has given you a couple of hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our heroes in the Duchy of Cloven Bay uh, have gotten up to. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. See ya.